this is candlelight vinyasa yoga and I like to call it kind of funky flowy candlelight vinyasa because I'm playing with the idea of vinyasa and vinyasa means literally to place in a particular order um, and normally the shorthand is the movement pattern that's like a sun salutation where you go into a plank you lower down you come into a back bend you go back to a down dog um, and then it might completely turn into a sun salutation or it might just be that little section but that is technically a vinyasa um, and so it has become kind of the shorthand for that but what we're going to do tonight might include other kinds of vinyasas or other little sequences that get a little bit different and a little bit funky i'm going to get um, we're going to start out kind of low to the earth um, and do some things that sort of focus a little bit on the hips then we'll do some balancey things things that take us into more standing balancey flows because i love them <laughs> and then we'll do some other uh things that take us down closer to the ground so kind of starting low moving our way up and then coming back down so we're going to start laying down and i'm going to start with a butterfly shape in my legs so i'm going to put my feet together and open the knees out wide and because i'm going to do that um, I, I find it helpful to have a little bit of support. So if you have some yoga blocks like this one, you can put that under your knee. Or if you've got some throw pillows, that works. You can also roll up a blanket and put that underneath. Or you can just free it, you know, just hang out in space <laughs> with no props or support whatsoever. It'll also work. Okay, so then I'm going to lie down. And then my initial... Thing here is just to kind of get a little comfy so I love little windshield wipers and I do like the like the feet are about as wide apart as they would be for bridge pose and then kind of drop them back and forth and then you can try and like a little bit wider than you would do for bridge pose and drop them back and forth and then if I had a rectangular mat I would probably be about right at the edges of the mat or slightly wider and drop them back and forth so that's about as wide when you have a round yoga mat, you've got a little more wideness than you do in a rectangular situation. So I'm still on the edges of the mat, technically. Okay, so then I'm going to let my feet come back together and let the knees find a little butterfly home. And I might need to adjust the props so that I get this little inner thigh stretch and then also snuggle the shoulder blades underneath me. And I want to find a position for my head that makes it feel like my chin is level. So if it feels like the chin is kind of uh, poking up, you might even put a pillow or a blanket under your head. Now you can work with the arms in a lot of different ways. Sometimes, oh, that feels kind of good actually. Sometimes I love this cactus shape where I do the elbows about level with the shoulder and the arms kind of hang out in a cactusy shape. Sometimes I like them better down here or even across the belly button. So I was like in the cactus. I'm going to go back to that. And then because we're sort of settling into an evening practice, an evening practice that's kind of we're in the yin-ish kind of, um, in yoga it's called the um, Ida time. So we have these channels in our body that are like there's a lunar channel, there's a solar channel. So the solar channel a little more on the active side, kind of more active during the day when we're kind of being more um, cerebral. And then the Eda side kind of has its time in the evening. Um, and we're, you know, kind of getting more in touch with our sort of intuitive or more feeling side of things. And so as we take a few more breaths, let's take about another minute or so. As we take the breaths here, Just kind of feeling ourselves uh, like glide into that intuitive. Um, it doesn't mean that it's not active. It just means that it has a different kind of activity, right? The pingala is the corresponds to the left nostril and the left channel of the body, the lunar cycle. There's some really interesting correspondences also in the nadis, the Ida and the Pingala, between two parts of the vagus nerve. Some people call it vagus nerve. 
which is a cranial nerve that's responsible in large measure for our parasympathetic response, our ability to relax and feel peaceful and also relate to other people. And yoga is another word for connection or uniting or joining. And so it really gets to the heart of our practice, this nervous system response. When we tune into the lunar channel, we're turning, tuning into this front part, actually, of the, um, of the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve has a dorsal and a an, uh, front portion. And the front portion of the vagus nerve is responsible for our feelings of connection and um, heart connection, right? Our feelings of love and support and compassion. And so we're just making that heart connection with the breath and with the body. In yoga, they called it pingala, but it really is, a, it's just an intuitive inclination about what was going on in the nervous system. And so we're going to bring the knees together with your exhale and give yourself a moment to sort of, again, find a little movement here. Now I'm going to bring my knees in and give the movement pattern a little bit more bigness, <laughs> if that's the right name. And I'm even going to do like a little, like you can hold on to your knees here, but I'm going to do a little bit of core, right? So I'm going to um, turn myself more into diagonal. So I've got a little bit of room around my furniture. I'm going to let the legs kind of hover, bring them in, let them hover, bring them in, let them hover, <laughs> bring them in, let them hover. And so I'm moving my body in these kind of flowy, twisty ways, but also giving myself a chance to tune into my deep core support. Because it all works together, friends. And in fact, the vagus nerve travels all the way through the body, which is why it's called vagus, because it's a vagabond. It's a traveler. <laughs> and so it travels through the body and it impacts all the internal organs that live right here in underneath and around beneath our core. And so when we have good core support, good strong support here, uh, where we feel more at ease with ourselves, <laughs> we have a little less fear, and we're able to respond to the world in a more compassionate way. And so magically, when we have a strong core, we also, when we develop strength around the center of our body, we also develop those notions <clears throat> and that feeling, right? We support the energetic and the um, emotional body in being able to trust and be present and relate. Okay. So what I've done essentially is I've grabbed one foot like a half happy baby, right on. And so I'm inviting you to do the same. And essentially I'm going to just rock this thing back and forth, opening at the knee to get a little bit of the hamstrings bringing it over so I can stretch out this other side and then letting it kind of come back, rocking it open, getting a little funky and flowy here. I might even oh, engage a little bit that way. Oh, flowing outward a little bit. Oh. Okay, we got one more to go. Now, I'm going to let this leg go and give it a little shake out. And then I'm going to take this leg and just sort of circle it around so that I've got these little circles going right here in my hip joint. And I want to move at a range of motion that seems okay. And then I'm going to circle it one more time out to the side. And then as I come around, I'm going to grab it with this other hand and turn this into a big twist. And so I've reached out through my arm to increase the amount of stretch I'm getting right there along my uh, pec <laughs> and my chest. And I'm kind of letting this hip fall over, letting the weight of my arm kind of hang out with it. If that feels too abusive, you don't have to keep doing that with your arm. You can let go. Take one 
one more big breath here. And then we're gonna bring this knee back around. Oh, give this whole thing a big stretch out. Oh, this is my favorite part of messing with one side, is can I feel a difference in the side I just worked on? And what it feels like to me is that this side's got stretched out a little longer. It's a little closer to the earth. I don't feel quite as much of a curve under my low back. So clearly the relationship between my hip and my spine has changed, between the leg and the spine has changed. I think that's pretty groovy. <laughs> so I'm into it. I'm going to do it again on the other side. So I'm going to bring this guy in and grab him in this kind of half happy baby shape. And I can leave this leg bent or straightened all the way out. I like to start with it bent and then work it into a straighter shape. As I kind of come to here, I can slide that heel away, reach out through my arm, get a little funky, a little flowy, a little back and forth. Oh, take it out, stretch into the side. Sometimes it feels good even to lift the leg and hover it out to the side or out to the middle. Oh, and then flow it back and forth. One more time, I ought to do it. Oh, I'm gonna bring him all the way over here though. <laughs> This is the funky part, <laughs> is that you can do what you want, man. It's your pose. Have fun, go off road. All right, so then I'm gonna come back. Oh, I'm gonna give my hamstrings a little love because I forgot about them. Oh. All right, and then I'm gonna let go of that leg and I'm gonna give this guy a little straightening out and I'm just gonna circle this thigh around. And it's interesting to me sometimes that one side can be so radically different than the other side, but I'm definitely feeling the muscles on this thigh differently as it kind of moves through this inner thigh, outer thigh relationship. The next time it comes across, I'm gonna go over into the twist. So hold on to that guy, finding this arm, a little bit of space to get a stretch out through the chest. Sometimes I like to bob back and forth a little bit with the poses, just kind of exploring the space that I'm creating with my yoga pose, asana. Oh, okay, so then I'm gonna take one more big breath and bring it all back. Oh, and give this guy a little shake. <laughs> and then, and then oh, stretch it out. and see how things landed collectively. That's pretty nice. <laughs> so it feels good. Everything feels really nice. I feel like I can put my clothes back on a little straighter, but I feel like my low back is pretty even on both sides. The hips feel pretty even on both sides. And there's always a little bit of asymmetry. Our bodies are different. On this side, I've got a liver. And I've got <laughs> some an appendix. On this side, there's stomach and a spleen and a pancreas and some other stuff, <laughs> you know, like all of the intestines kind of in different places, but the body is asymmetrical. One lung is bigger than the other, like the heart is on one side, not on the other side. And so at the very, you know, at the very, very deepest inside of us, we're not symmetrical beings. And so it's kind of silly for us to think that poses are going to make us that feel that way, but as close as possible. <laughs> So we're gonna to come to a seated position, and you can do that through this little kind of rocking motion, catching a couple of boat poses. We can just come up to sitting. One more. Because <laughs> I think they're fun. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna sit on the mat with a cross-legged position, just kind of find a simple position. So usually for me, it's easiest to sit with my left leg in front. So that's the way I start. And then, so we're gonna start just with these little kind of back and forth with the spine, kind of round back a little bit, come forward a little bit. It's gonna turn into a Sufi roll. So I'm gonna go forward to my left. This might be your right in the screen because the video thing back and forth is a little crazy. And then we're gonna scoop around the back, send the ribs over to the side, and then scoop it forward. So it's like we're drawing a big circle with the outside of our rib cage. Trying to push a big circle forward and back and forward and 
sideways and back. Oh. Now when we get to the front again, we're gonna pause. We're gonna come up nice and tall. We're gonna do these little kind of washing machine motions, just little twisty things. And then we're gonna twist and you can pick this knee up. Now you can wrap this leg in tighter or just hold it steady. Lean back a little bit, get tall, twist. If you wanna put your arm around the edge, you can certainly do that. And then there's some interesting things about the back of the neck, particularly these muscles that live up here near the back of the neck. Like feel out the neck and feel out the muscle that lives right in here, your trapezius muscle. And when there's tightness or tension there, sometimes like we'll try to jerk ourselves around with the twist, but try this. Um, take your eyes, just the eyeballs themselves, and um, so I'm twisting to my right, right? So I'm gonna turn my eyes to the left. So I'm gonna look to my left with just my eyeballs, and then I'm gonna see if I can twist my head around again and then let my eyes kind of follow me. For some reason, <laughs> sometimes, if you turn your eyes the opposite way of the way you're turning your head, you'll actually get your head around the twist a little bit further. There's a weird resistance. Strange. <laughs> but see if it works for you. It might not be a problem for you. Okay, so we're gonna bring the head back. I'm gonna do that a couple times actually, and then come back and look over that front shoulder, kind of let the head find a little oh, movement, and then we'll come back. Oh, out of our twist. Now, oops, my right leg is still in front, or left leg rather is still in front. Oh, I may have gotten that all mixed up earlier. <laughs> in any case, <laughs> you probably get the idea. Okay, so just moving the spine. So I'm going to take myself and essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this around. So this foot is going to stay where it is. This foot is going to follow me as I rotate all the way around and come into down dog. And so oh, taking a down dog moment here to kind of walk your dog. Now, you know, put your hands where they seem like they're most comfortable, shoulder distance apart, kind of hug your upper arms in. You can walk your feet back and forth or out to the sides, come up onto the tiptoes, come back. And so finding kind of bending the knee, just finding some down dog-ish shaped <laughs> movement here. And then, oh, we're gonna do, it's gonna seem a little funky, but here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take, oh, this, so this is my left leg, which was the one that was in front earlier. So I'm gonna put that knee down and then I'm gonna keep turning, keep turning, keep turning until I sit down. And when I sit down, my right leg is in front. <laughs> so one of the coolest things in all of yoga. <laughs> so Ken, I'm gonna start with these little cat cows. If yours didn't work out that way, by the way, just put your other leg in front. <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be fine. Sometimes it goes wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and with the left right mirrored image thing on the screen, oh, that's the hardest part. Okay, so <laughs> the camera is not recording it exactly the same, y'all. Okay, so then I'm going to, so this is my right leg in front. So I'm going to start to my left, right? Come forward, go over to the right, go back. So I'm just rolling myself around here, holding on a little bit to the front of my knee. Rolling it around. I'm gonna do one more, kind of poking the chest up, coming around. And then when you get to the front, and I'm kind of letting myself too kind of rock around on the back of my pelvis, on the bottom of my pelvis. So when you get to the front, we're just gonna kind of ugh, stack it up. And now my pelvis is gonna stay more stable, but I'm gonna move just the ribs. Ugh. And then we're gonna turn so that we're twisting that way and pick up this um, leg. So this is my right leg. <laughs> I'm twisting that away. <laughs> and again, just 
noticing the back of the neck, any tension in the back of the neck. If it feels really hard, like there's a lot of resistance to you twisting this way, take your eyes the opposite way. So you're going this way, you're gonna take your eyes that way. Keep looking that way as you turn. Keep your eyes looking that way. It's not easy because your eyes wanna follow the movement of your head, but see if you can turn your head and then bring your eyes with you. And just see what happens. It's a weird exercise anyway. <laughs> and you can even tr like feel this out. Like, look over to that side. Do you feel a different tension than when you look the other way? Like when I look that way with my eyes and I'm turning this way, there's a, like a little less sensation. But if I look that way with my eyes, I feel like just a tiny bit more sensation going up the back of my neck. It's strange. Maybe I'm making it up, but I don't think so. <laughs> One more breath. And then we're gonna turn the head the other way. Oh, I'm gonna drop that knee a little bit and just let myself ooh, adjust the neck out. Release some tension from here as well. Oh. All right, and when you come out of the twist, oh, give yourself a few moments of kind of jiggling, jiggling, jiggling. Now, before we do that other downward dog twisty thing, <laughs> we're going to do some little shoulder rolls. I'm also going to put my hair up out of my face. So you're going to do ugh, this thing where you bring the shoulders around and around and around. I'm going to join you momentarily. And then you can, like after four or five in one direction, go the other way. You take the shoulders the opposite direction. And then drop your chin down and let your shoulder blades kind of slide down your back a little bit. And just see, can you feel any tension right here at the back of the neck? If you do, you can even give yourself like a little bit of a massage right there. Oh. So again, this area is the back end of that vagus nerve, the dorsal side of the vagus nerve. And this area um, when it's out of balance or tight or there's some issues here, pulls us more towards fear and towards that kind of freeze part of the fight or flight system, which is interesting. Still checking things out there in terms of the research around it, but really interesting stuff going on um, in, in the research <laughs> to like how our nervous system impacts our feelings of well-being and our experience of trauma. And so just noticing that part. And then one more time before we, um, or one more thing, before we switch this around into a down dog, and that's just, we're gonna give our wrists a little bit of love, because from here, we're gonna go through some flowy stuff. And so I'm doing just some circular things and then little check-ins with the part of my wrist where the pinky and the thumb live. And then I'm gonna give my wrist just a little bit of a massage. So I'm gonna squeeze, almost like I'm trying to separate my hand from my arm bones. I'm just kind of squeeze it right in against, right in against this crease on the wrist on both sides, just giving that a little squeezy massage. And then massage down your forearm too. And then massage into your pinky finger and just kind of ex experiment with this meaty part all the way up to the pinky. This is where this tiniest bone in our wrist is located. It's right in this little area. And so just kind of feeling out the muscles that protect and support that. And then come over to your thumb, which in my world is way more active. Um, <laughs> so you can definitely give your thumb a little love. And the hands have a banda. They have a kind of um, mudra with the floor. So when we put our hands on the ground for downward dog or for our planks, what we're looking to do rather than smoosh the hand into the floor like that, is we're looking to sort of have a little bit of activation. So we're actually pressing a little bit into the fingertips. What that does is it creates a lift right here and an actually an arch to help support our wrist. And so when you're in your dogs or your cobras or whatever, if you can, it's, and I'm exaggerating here because I don't have the floor against to create resistance. When I'm on the floor, I'm just sort of gently pressing the little patties of my fingertips down just to create a little more support there. And then give the other hand that same massage so working into the wrist, massaging down the forearms, and giving the thumb and the pinky a little bit of love. Okay. And then with this kind of right wrist.
wrist. We're going to go into our downward dog on the other side. So this foot is basically going to kind of stay and I'm just going to rotate myself all the way around and then out and into down dog. And then this down dog I'm going to use oh, just to create oh, some length. Right, so I'm going to put my hands way out in front of me and I'm going to create length and then I'm going to pick myself up and then come back, bend the knees, really pull the hips back, pick myself up a little rounder, come back. And you can almost go to a plank if you want to. I'm just finding this kind of slightly more cat back kind of nice. Now we're going to walk the hands back to the feet so that we wind up in a dangly pose. So we're just going to keep going, keep going, keep going. And then you can have your feet out wide or you can wiggle them in. So wherever it feels like a good place, you can have your knees quite bent or a little more on the straight side. You can grab your elbows or interlace your fingers behind your back or you can just let everything get hangy, <laughs> hang down and be loose. And I kind of like this sort of swish back and forth. Mm. And then we're going to come to this kind of flat backed position. Oh, and then we're going to bend the knees and get a little deeper. Then come into that flat backed position. Oh, and bend the knees and get a little deeper. And then one more time to that flat backed position. And then we're going to come into a squat like a malasana. So I wiggle my feet out a little wider. I might even be able to squat down onto a block. Sometimes it takes two, <laughs> probably tonight it would take two. But your hips might come all the way down low. And so we're just kind of giving ourselves a little, oh, a little squat here. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh. And then coming back in, we're gonna wiggle the feet back towards the center, but we're gonna also walk ourselves out to downward dog. And so hands are walking out. We're gonna take a nice big lift with that right leg. So we've got a three-legged dog. And then we're going to bring that leg in nice and tight and squeeze in. You might even be able to kiss your knee. <laughs> bring that knee in. <sighs> Hug it around. Send the heel back. Now sink into your heel a bit on the standing leg. Level your pelvis. Feel that length. And then we're going to step that right foot forward. And you can, if you can go right through the middle, step right through the middle. If you're like me and need a little bit of space, step out to the side. Now we're going to turn so the pelvis is forward. And then we're going to bring the knee down. So we've got this lunge shape. And then, ugh, if, <laughs> if it would feel better to have a piece of furniture or block nearby, you can get that. We're just gonna pulsate through this lunge kind of back and forth a couple times. And then find your crescent. Oh, and you can take your arms out so it's a little bit bigger in the heart. Or you can bring your arms up. You can do, I like to do this where I take the elbows back, shoulders back, just kind of hold on. I like feeling the level of my pelvis here. And then I use my thigh for balance. <laughs> oh. And then one more breath, kind of letting the elbows come back, the chest open a little bit like a cobra. And then we're going to take this whole thing backwards and turn it back into downward dog. So, oh, stepping it back. And then taking the left leg up and bringing that guy in and stretching it back and sinking a little bit, bringing it in and stretching it back. Oh, sink into that heel and then step it in. And again, we're going to bring the back knee down, kind of square the pelvis forward, bring the knee into place, go in a little forward, a little back. Oh. Easing in, feeling where the stretch begins and stops. Mm. And then when you find the lunge you like, then coming up and adding whatever arm position makes you feel exactly right. <laughs> Holding steady through the pelvis easing forward to the degree that makes sense and creating that little back bendy shape <laughs> whether it's wobbly or not
Nice big breath. And so we're gonna take our hips back. And we're gonna wind up back in our friend downward dog. Okay. Now, once you're here, we're gonna take ourselves forward into a vinyasa of sorts. So you're gonna come into plank, and then we're gonna do knees, chest, and chin which sort of looks a little funny, like your butt's sticking up. And now some people tuck the toes and straighten the legs. I go forward, because it puts me right where my hands need to be. And whatever one is the best way for you to get out of there so you don't do anything wacky to your shoulders. So we're lifting into Cobra. Now, I don't do this with my Cobra. I don't push with my arm, because it makes my arm bone roll forward. My elbows go out to the side. I'm exaggerating a little bit, but so you can see it. And that creates a dysfunction here and it's not really the intention of a cobra, right? The intention of a cobra is to strengthen the back and also to open this space right here across the chest. Because ultimately, it wouldn't be called cobra if we weren't stretching open that area that would be the hood of the cobra if this were a cobra, <laughs> right? So we're gonna do it two more times. Just kind of getting into it. So I've got my hands nice and planted on the floor, elbows back, open chest soft around my neck and I'm doing like the little baby shape that feels just right for my back tonight and then coming on back okay so we're gonna take ourselves back up and into that downward dog oh if you want a little child's pose there first do that and then come back to your dog and this time you can walk your feet to your hands or you can hop up there if you want to or do one big step and then one more step and again, now we're at the top of the mat or at the other side of the mat, whatever it might be. We're gonna shake everything out. Mm. Kind of rinse it. Oh. Mm. And then we're gonna come up halfway and come back down and come up halfway and come back down. Oh. And then halfway and all the way to standing this time. And without smacking anything in your apartment or your home, oh, people, plants, or otherwise, give yourself a stretch. Now, we're gonna find mountain pose. And I'm gonna find mountain pose through kind of a wobbliness. So I'm gonna lift up onto my tiptoes and I'm gonna lift my toes up off the floor and sink into my heels. Tiptoes, heels, tiptoes, Heels. Now, one more time. Tiptoes, heels, and then planting my feet back down and trying to find what feels like the most stable base. And from the feet, growing myself up a little taller. So I've still got a little bend in my knee, a little bend at my hip. And then I'm going to imagine this kind of dinosaur tail extension out through my tailbone that creates the structure and support that lets my back body support me and release. And again, so my front body is that kind of lunar channel. My back body being a little bit more connected to my solar channel. And so I'm letting my solar channel support me in relaxing into my uh, more soft, <laughs> more gentle, kinder, compassionate state. All right, so it lets my heart open because I've got the support oh, behind there. So there's a nest for my heart to go into. So we're gonna take a nice big breath. I'm gonna avoid my plants. <laughs> and we're gonna sing into a chair pose and I'm letting my back body support that pose, leaning back into that. Coming up, nice big tall stretch. Maybe it turns into a little back bend, and then it comes back into this chair. Maybe your hands come down, maybe your arms go straight forward. Coming back up, one more time, we're gonna sink into that chair, and then we're gonna put all the weight into the left leg and pick the right foot up onto the tiptoe. And again, I'm gonna let my back body really support me as I bring that leg up and across, maybe across the thigh. Maybe it goes across my shin or just across my ankle so I can keep my toes on the ground for balance. 
And so we're holding steady. I love my hands at my heart when I'm trying to balance. And I also have my eyes glued to a spot in front of me so that I don't have to um, roam around with my eyeballs. It helps me stay steady. Now, if I want to challenge my balance, I can <laughs> by turning my head, right? So we're gonna pause. I'm gonna pick this leg up. I'm gonna give it a little hug. And then I'm gonna step it back into a high lunge. Now I'm gonna try not to fall and break a tooth. <laughs> no guarantees, but I'm gonna try. <laughs> so my hips are pointing forward, just like I did with that lower lunge. And then I'm gonna lean into this so I get a really long stretch and I'm gonna reach down into that heel. Right on, now you might be able to slide your legs a little further out. My heel doesn't touch the ground here yet, so I still have room, so that's good. And then I'm gonna swing this hip around so that I come towards warrior two. Now my pelvis is facing a different direction and I'm gonna let myself come back. Now, we're gonna do this kind of Qigong thing. So you're gonna imagine that you've got a ball between your hands that's about the size of a beach ball, okay? And you're gonna holding this warrior two and you can go in and out a little bit like you're gonna to go towards triangle, but keep mostly warrior two. We're gonna move this ball backwards and forwards kind of over a wave. Okay. Now in Qigong, this is a way that we learn to go with the flow. <laughs> a way that we learn to let go of trying to be always in control. And you can make the pattern whatever you want. It's just you're moving it like it's a wave, right? The palms just facing each other. So yeah, you've got this ball. Now, peel yourself open into your warrior two. Come on back to reverse warrior. And we're gonna take the hands to the ground and spin back up onto this big toe, okay? So we're going to the ground, to the ground, spin back up. And then we're gonna add a twist here. So if you wanted to, you could put a block in here to create a little bit more height. Hips are level for now. And then I'm gonna rotate open and I'm gonna do some circles with my shoulder. Now I can emphasize the circles in my upper back by lifting my hip and keeping more stable through the pelvis. Or you can allow that hip to drop, but that's gonna move your pelvis also. So it's up to you. Okay, so now straightening out the front leg and coming back. We're gonna do that one more time. Straightening out the front leg, coming back. And then we're gonna step this thing back into down dog if you want to do the vinyasa, up into chair if you don't. So, if you don't want to do the vinyasa, bring that foot right up to your front foot. You want to do the vinyasa, step back to down dog. And again, in this case, that traditional idea, if that's the right word, of the plank, the lowering down portion, the cobra or the up dog portion, and then the back to down dog. And either way, we're gonna wind up in the same place because you're either gonna step up or walk up or hop up to your hands. And so oh, together, we're gonna fold over, get a little rinsy. We're gonna come up halfway and exhale, fold. Oh, that feels good. <laughs> and come up halfway and exhale, fold. And shake it out. And then we're gonna come all the way up and give that mountain pose a big stretch. And then finding that sense again of uh, the mountain pose, right? So <laughs> I can let my front body just hang all out and not have any boundaries. But that's not good for me. <laughs> a little bit of boundary is good. And how do we create boundaries? with the back body, right on. And so the pingala, that energetic, whew, that backside, that dorsal side of our body is the part of us that's creating this structure, the support, so that the boundaries. <laughs> and I set the boundaries in mountain pose by, you know, getting my pelvis level, having that kind of sense that I've got that big long tail, sinking into my feet, relaxing my shoulders into the back body. I don't need them to be up here. They're back there, <laughs> where their support structure. Right? Big bones back there to protect my heart. And then we're gonna come back to our friend, the chair pose. And again, we're gonna rely on this back body. We're leaning back into that so that our knees are safe. And then coming back up, 
right? I might go into chair and bring my arms forward so I can get oh, a little more connected to that back body and then come up, maybe leaving the arms straight up or by the ears, wherever they'll stay, right? If they don't go up by your ears, keep them forward. And then we're gonna hold that chair pose. And now I'm gonna keep this idea of this back body anchoring me, come onto my tiptoes with my left foot, and then I'm gonna bring that guy up into the balance. And I might be a little wobbly at first, <laughs> or a little wobbly the whole time. I'm finding a balance here. Letting my front body ease into my back body my core create that structure and support for me. Well, this is where it gets fun because I'm going to try to pick this knee up and step myself back into my high lunge <laughs> without losing the control, baby. So I like to, again, just kind of make sure I've got my feet kind of hips distance apart so I'm whoop, in pretty good shape. <sighs> and then I'm going to lean into this and press back through my heel. So I have this long slope that I'm trying to create. You can put the arms up by the ears if you want to increase that. For me, back by my legs feels better. And then again, we're gonna come all the way down. And again, you might put a block under your hand or not, but we're gonna do the twisty, twisty lunge. So keeping the hips level or letting the hip fall, that's a choice. I like to keep the hips mostly level. And then as I kind of get fancy with this arm, <laughs> I'll let them fall and bring them back, right? Let them fall and bring them back. So I'm actively feeling myself lift through that inner belly, letting it go and then lifting. Okay, so we're gonna take this back into down dog or forward into a forward bender into a chair. So ugh, that's your choice. Which choice is right for you? I don't know the answer to that question, <laughs> but I hope you do. All right, so then we come forward into plank and you can modify your plank. We're gonna lower down. We're gonna come into your version of a back bend. I'm gonna do a little locust with my legs too. <laughs> and then, whew, hold on a second. <laughs> mm. We're gonna join you soon. People standing at the top of your mat. <laughs> We're gonna come back again, maybe like oh, a little child's pose moment. And then a down dog. And then we're gonna walk ourselves, or hop, to the top of the mat. <laughs> oh, hang upside down like a rag doll. Give it a little ritz. <laughs> and then we're gonna come up, half flat back, go back over. Oh. Inhale, flatter back, go back over, <laughs> flatter back, and then all the way to your mountain pose. Oh. Oh. Give it all a shake, yogis. And then, again, okay, feeling myself settling into my back body so that my front body backs up, <laughs> nestles in. I've got that core support sensation. So once again, I'm gonna put the weight on my right leg and I'm gonna bring my left leg up and then I'm gonna take it back. And I'm gonna bring it up and take it back. <laughs> Bring it up, oh. And then I'm gonna try to take it all the way back into that high lunge again. Ooh. Pausing with that high lunge. Oh. <laughs> Lengthening it out. Oh, and then I'm gonna turn this guy around so that it becomes a warrior two again. And then find your warrior two, because maybe you need to adjust the feet. I do. All right, and then we're gonna hold the beach ball. And we're gonna go through this kind of flowy, flowy, <laughs> oh, flowy, flowy place. Now, come back to your warrior two. 
And this time, we're gonna turn this Warrior Two Friends into a half moon balance. <laughs> so I'm gonna bring this back leg a little closer. And maybe I'm gonna trust myself just to put my hand on the floor. Maybe a block is a better idea, right on? So I'm gonna, oh, get this leg up. Now hold on as much as you need to right now because we're gonna try to feel this connection. So we're gonna connect the body in. So I'm gonna draw into my back body and then I'm gonna leave, use this outer hip to really pick myself up so that I'm super light on my fingertips or super light on my hand. If you wanna go a little extra crazy, you can, oop, hold on. <laughs> Don't knock over your furnishings. <laughs> <laughs> that was me saving myself from knocking over everything behind me. But in any case, <laughs> you can bend your knee and reach back there and grab your foot like a bow pose, right? <laughs> Not a good idea. <laughs> Last big breath here. Now we're going to come back and come up oh, and turn all the toes towards the wide side. Oh, that felt good, yo. <laughs> that hip is a different animal. And we're going to fold in. Now you can adjust the feet more in. You can adjust the toes more out. The way you know what you need to do is like start with the, the feet kind of parallel and then feel the knee joint and feel your hip joint. And if you feel anything that feels like a binding or a pinching, adjust the toes out slightly and see if it changes. Right on? Some of us actually have twists in the long bones of the legs that create problems when we try to turn the toes in. So you wanna choose the right amount for you. Now, you can just put your hands down in front of you. They may or may not reach the floor. You can reach around the inside and grab hold of your ankles or reach around the outside and grab hold of the calves, the thighs, or the ankles and create a little bit more of a kind of shoulder situation back of the neck lengthening. Stand strong on your legs. Oh. One more breath here. Oh. So we're going to inhale our way out so that it's almost a downward dog. We're going to get, oh, the weight is still in my legs, right on. I'm very light in the shoulder, but closer to downward dog. And I'm letting this upper back really drop through. Now this is not a stretch I recommend for all the time. But every now and again, this kind of hyperextension of the shoulder <laughs> feels amazing. So one more breath. And then we're going to come around and we're going to turn this side into our half moon. Okay. So maybe with a block, <laughs> maybe without the block, but we're going to get ourselves up. Start with balance, right? Hold on with your hands for a second and then pick yourself up. Draw the front body into the back body. Lift with your hip, the outer hip and leg and then create the support. And if you want to do the bow, the bow, you can do the bow. And I want this hand to be light so that I'm doing the work from my core. That hand's there in case things go wrong. I can catch myself. Get in a nice big breath. Whee! And then we're going to step it back. Oh, come up to standing. Oh, that felt good, y'all. <laughs> oh. Now, this is going to turn into a little bit more of a twisty thing. So I'm going to do it facing you, but you're going to wind up seeing my back. And blocks can be helpful. So if you want to grab your blocks or whatever you're using, like a block, a stack of books, <laughs> that medical book you used in college, whatever you got. Um, <laughs> if you had a medical book in college, I didn't. I had an art history book, but it was equally big. <laughs> so so <laughs> whatever the answer is. So now for this one, I'm going to turn my... Um, right toes in. I'm going to go to my left side first. I'm going to turn my left toes out. For you, this might look like your right, so go whichever direction you want. And then I'm going to let myself kind of see, like, can I drop in here? It's possible that you can put your elbow on the floor. I cannot, but if I put a block there, I can rest my elbow. And then I can use this arm in a kind of free-flowing way to create a little bit more room wrap it over my back. I can bend at the knees. Right? I can get a little bit more like snuggly into this thigh. Oh. 
Okay, so we're gonna come back to the center. I'm gonna bring that leg around. Turn this leg out, wander this way. Now this side is a different animal for me. <laughs> this hip is a lot stronger. There's a lot more mus muscle in this side that resists me when I try to do wacky things to it. So letting myself oh, oh, kind of find little places inside this kind of forward bendy twisty shape. Rinsing out tension from my neck because I'm hanging upside down. Let go, we're coming around. Now we're gonna get back down low to the ground. We're gonna start with a child's pose. So we're gonna, oh, you can just uh, <laughs> walk this thing around a little. Or if you're on your mat, you know, the right direction, you can just put your knees down. And then, oh, let yourself sink back. However far back your hips will go. If your forehead lands on the floor, awesome. <laughs> if it doesn't, put your arms underneath your forehead so you have a place to land. You can wrap your arms behind your back. Now, because my hips don't sink as close to my heels, it tends to feel like I'm plowing into my forehead when I do that. So I always leave my arms up front because it spreads the weight out so I can rest my forehead on the floor without all of the weight of my body going there. And it feels nice. <laughs> so you find the one that's nice. Oh. Now, we're going to turn this into some form of a little um, pigeony swan. Now, I'm going to do this on my back. <laughs> you might want to come from here into the pigeon pose where you bring one leg forward and the other leg all the way back, okay? Now, if you are of a mind to do it, follow me. We're gonna take uh, the right hip to the floor, whichever hip is the one that we were aiming towards, and then that left leg is the one I'm gonna bring on top. So I'm laying on my side right now, okay? I'm gonna bring this left leg around in front of me. I'm gonna hook this right knee in behind it as best I can, and then I'm gonna roll this thing over onto my back. So, that maybe when I get up here, I can grab both ankles, right? If that bothers your knee, don't do that part. <laughs> you can reach through and hold on to just this one leg, or you can do what I'm doing is kind of rest a hand on the thigh and a hand on the shin. Oh. And I'm, oh, I love this pose. <laughs> Especially as you get kind of closer to the end of the night and we're kind of, oh. Kind of releasing some tension. I love to rock on the back of my pelvis. Now I can keep this leg, which is like I'm stretching this kind of external hip rotator area. And if I want to get a little bit more of this kind of hip flexor right in here, then I can extend that leg out. And so I've got this leg like almost in that happy baby shape I had earlier, except more parallel across my chest. And then I'm letting this leg become the leg that's more active because I'm holding this guy in place and stretch it into that guy. And I might even do like a little bit of a banana shape across this outer hip. That feels really nice. Oh, it feels really nice. <laughs> oh. Be careful not to torque your lower leg bone too much with your knee. I don't know if you can see this, but I've got my foot quite flexed and I'm holding it so that it stays flexed, and I'm holding my femur bone right at the knee joint to protect the um, ligaments inside my knee. I'm not trying to torque my lower leg in relationship to my thigh. Whatever angle it points at is the angle it points at. Oh. Manipulating my lower leg is not gonna change things in my hip. Now, if I let go of that and I rotate my thigh bone more, then it might be different, right? My lower leg comes with in that case. But don't pull on your lower leg to try to move your thigh. Always move from the center of the body towards the extremities, not the other way around. It'll serve you better. Okay, so again, I'm gonna come around. And those of you that are doing the regular pigeon, you can kind of unwind yourself. So this will be the leg that was on in the front. And we're gonna put that foot on the ground and then we're gonna roll ourselves onto our side. now. This pose is called the sleeping Buddha 
because there are some um, pictures of the Buddha where he's laying like this. I don't know what his upper arm is doing. Maybe it's under his head. I can't remember now that I think about it. Um, but, <laughs> but in any case, so right now I've got this leg on the floor for support and I'm going to stretch out through the bottom leg. Now this is a core pose because the core is going to be used to stabilize us. So I'm going to hold on with my core, bring my knee in, see if I can get hold of this big toe. If that doesn't work out, then I don't hold the big toe. I hold down here. Okay. And then if I can, I'm going to try to avoid sinking backward like that. So I'm going to use my core to keep my hips as level as possible and my body as stable as possible. And if I have a little more core strength, I can even lift the leg off the floor on the bottom. And so I have to use my core even more to stabilize this shape. And all that's happening is everything in the center of my body is coming in like I'm putting on a tight pair of leather pants. <laughs> Suck in that waist. Oh, and then I'm going to let go and release that leg. And I'm going to come back for a moment onto my back. Oh, and you might want to go back to down dog, right? So if you do, we're doing the regular pigeon, roll over onto your belly, head back into down dog, or maybe throw in a vinyasa if you're feeling super spanky and like extra energetic tonight. <laughs> and then my friends, we're going to do this thing that we were doing before. So I'm going to roll onto the other side. I'm going to put that leg across. I'm not going into my Buddha yet, but I'm going to bring this knee in nice and snug behind it and then roll onto the back. And maybe I can hold both knees or both shins. Maybe that's ridiculous. And I just hold the one or I hold through the center here and onto that leg. And so you're just choosing the right amount for you. Giving yourself the right, ah, oh, the right amount of, ah. Oh. Now this side, I feel a lot more spicy in this hip. It's not crazy spicy. I'm not even sure I would call it jalapeno spicy. <laughs> it's just, but I feel more sensation. And so I am inclined to also give myself this little bit of sensation. So I hold this guy in, let this guy get stronger and longer. And then I'm gonna kind of give myself that little bit of a banana shape to my torso because I like the way it feels. I'm reaching out through this leg. And I'm trying to reach through my thigh rather than reach through my foot, although sometimes my foot likes to help. <laughs> mm. Rinsing out, keeping tension out of my neck and my jaw. Try to keep tension out of the face if you can. Ooh. There are four sets of cranial nerves that are responsible for the parasympathetic response or the relaxation response. Um, the vagus nerve, which I already mentioned, is the most powerful, but there are others that land in the face and control like the facial features or not the facial features but the facial expressions, um, salivation in the mouth and the, di um, the di uh, dilating of the pupils so that we can um, see patterns and respond to danger appropriately. <laughs> so they, it works with that kind of fight or flight system. All right, so stretch out through that leg. And then again, we're gonna take about two breaths here. And if you're doing your regular pigeon, you're just doing your pigeon. And then you guys are gonna come out of there and the leg that was up front, that's gonna be the one that comes over into our sleeping Buddha. And so I'm gonna start by using that leg for stability so that I can get myself organized. And again, kind of my intention is to try to keep my hip and my shoulder mostly stable, really hug it in through the core. I'm gonna reach down here, see if I can get hold of that big toe and see if I can let that leg get straight. And again, the tendency is to fall backward. So we're gonna to try to use our core to stabilize that movement and maybe even lift the bottom leg if it doesn't cause too much trouble. Oh, I gotta use my core a little more on this side. <laughs> it's a little tighter. Oh. Oh, it feels good though, y'all. We're going to take two more breaths. And then I'm going to let this guy go. And I'm going to roll onto my back and give that leg a little shimmy. Oh, <laughs> oh it just feels nice. And this whole side feels a little different than the other side right now. But in a second, I think it's all going to rinse out. <sighs> Hopefully it feels just as good to you. <laughs> So we're going to do a little bit of bridge play. Now, when I do bridge play, I like to um, 
again, kind of start with this idea, like my feet are about where I want them for bridge. And then I'm gonna start with the little windshield wipers right there and go back and forth. And then I'm gonna wiggle them out a foot wide or so, a foot width and wiggle them back and forth. And then I'm gonna go out another width until I'm about as wide as a mat would be. If you have a mat, you'll have those edges to feel and then drop them back and forth. Okay, so then I'm just gonna wiggle them back this time where I want my bridge to go. Now, I am gonna do a bridge pose. I need a little more grip with my feet here. So <laughs> I'm gonna do a bridge pose that's a rolling bridge. This is called Dweepadapitham, and I'm gonna do a movement with my arms. So I'm gonna show you what these movements are. So the arms go like this. So they're starting at the bottom with the thumbs pointing up, and I'm gonna take them all the way up over my head and then I'm gonna let them relax onto the floor, okay? Even if I have to bend my elbows a little bit, I'm gonna just let them relax here. All right, so then I'm gonna lower the spine all the way back down, lower my hips onto the floor. And when the hips are back down where they are like now, then I'm gonna bring the arms back, okay? So the arms go up with the hips and then they wait and then they come down at the end when the hips are all the way back down. So I get my feet under me, get my shoulder blades under me, Hips go up, arms go up, okay? So I let the arms rest, and I rock a little bit here. I'm not in any kind of big hurry, but if you are, you can come down, and then scoop a little bit through the tailbone, and you're gonna try to plant yourself down one vertebrae at a time. Try to really feel each vertebrae. Now, it looks like I'm closer to the ground than I am, so there's, like, my flesh touches the ground before my spine does um, in some instances, right? Especially around my bootay but I can still feel these little bones slowly coming down to the surface of the floor. So I haven't moved my arms yet. And as soon as my sacrum, which is not there yet, but it's almost there, there it is. As soon as my sacrum goes back to its neutral curve, I bring the arms down, okay? So we're gonna do that four more times. So I have to always reset. <laughs> so hips up, arms up. The arms go up and again, you can take a moment here to play with this bridge. And then you're gonna scoop in the tailbone. I like to lift my toes off the floor and sometimes I lift up onto the tiptoes because that's helpful. And then we're gonna, oh, really slowly. I'm really letting myself take the time to feel my upper back plant one vertebrae at a time. Feel, right now I'm just at the beginning of my lower back. And I'm trying to feel each of those vertebrae because they're harder to get to come down one at a time but I'm really trying to feel it. I'm almost to the top of my sacrum. I got one more lumbar vertebrae, and then there's the top of the sacrum, and then it rolls back to its neutral curve, and I come back. I'm not in any kind of hurry, because this is really nice. <laughs> it feels great. And this movement of the vertebrae one at a time works these really deep muscles that help stabilize the spine, and they also provide a little bit of kind of fluidity to the spine. So our spine is a little less rigid, a little more responsive. And again, remember, <laughs> this is a metaphor in some ways, but it's also real, right? Because the nervous system responds to how the body is set up. So when our spine is really stiff and it doesn't have this kind of fluid movement, it's harder to get ourselves into places where we feel trusting and loving and um, patient and kind, it's easier for us to feel fearful when the spine is rigid, right on? And so it, it all kind of nests in together. At least this is the yoga theory. <laughs> so you can decide what you think. I mean, yoga does not tell you what to think. It tells you, hey, check this out. <laughs> See what's right for you. But do it, like do the work. <laughs> don't just, don't just theorize. Lift, the arms are coming up, and again, I'm going to let those rest up there because I like this big, muscly area in my upper back to kind of provide the stability and the strength for me. And then I'm going to, oh, got a little bit of a hamstring cramp starting to develop on my left side, but I'm going to roll this thing down. Hold on. Oh, I'll shake that up first. <laughs> and, then, and then I'll come back. Oh, okay, it was right there. <laughs> so I'm going to roll myself down. Oh, I try to feel. Right now, I'm about in the center of my spine. Right there, and there's like oh, almost to the bottom rib. Now I got one, two more ribs, and then now I'm feeling my lumbar. One, there's two, oh, 
three. Okay, four and five are really hard to do separately because they like to stay together. And then there's the top of my sacrum and roll it out and bring it down. Mm. Now I'm gonna do that one more time, you might be done. <laughs> It's possible that, like, when I teach this in classes, people go really fast. <laughs> like, nobody ever goes as slow as this. So if you're done, you're done. <laughs> so we're coming up. <sighs> and then really feeling it. One more time on the roll down. Trying to oh, feel those little vertebrae just really responding one at a time to the weight of the floor. Oh, okay, I'm down to the bottom of my ribs, and I'm there's my first lumbar and my second, and there's my third, almost to the fourth. The fifth and the fourth are really close together. There's the top of my sacrum, and then I'm going to roll the sacrum back into the floor and bring my arms back. Oh, I love the way that feels. It's just kind of, it's, I mean, the muscle of my back really had to work to make that happen, right? So I could feel the warmth and the energy that was expended by the muscles in my back. And the muscles in my back, I've spent a couple of days prior to right this minute doing some gardening and picking up really big bags of dirt to move them into different places and put them into pots and stuff. So like they were a little bit tender and a little bit sore. And now they feel a lot more, um, just, just a little bit more light. It feels lighter. That's the best way I could use to describe it. Okay. So before we um, head into Shavasana, we're going to just take an assessment and see, do you want to cover up with a blanket? Do you need to stick a couple of pillows in underneath your legs? I'm definitely going to go for pillows because um, it's that time, believe it or not. <laughs> We've been here for an hour and 10 minutes, so it's time for Shavasana. <laughs> and if you wanted to, you could probably take your phone with you into bed <laughs> and let your Shavasana turn right into nighttime. Uh, but if you're like me, you're going to be up for at least another hour or so. <laughs> Probably two. So the Shavasana is okay right here. I'm feeling like I want a blanket under my head too. Now, one of the things I like to do with the blanket under my head is I actually like to cradle that back part of my neck. The part that I was talking about being really vulnerable. And so it feels like when I take just a little tiny roll of blanket, not too much because I don't want to be too pushy but just a little bit and put it right under the edge of the neck. There's this kind of sense oh, that my whole nervous system just goes, oh, okay, that's what we needed. Thank you. <laughs> and everything slides into the back body, right? And so I was, it, the sensation, and this is the sensation, I know this is dumb, but I'm gonna say it anyway. The sensation was that prior to that moment, my brain was still stuck to the front of my forehead. And now, having put this blanket here, and just put it a little bit of softness around these occipital ridges in my, um, uh, in my skull, right? Is that now what's happened is this whole thing has oh, relaxed back. And I, my guess is that my brain didn't move <laughs> or not much, but instead the nervous system changed, right? And so I'm reporting the sensation as if something happened to my brain, but what really has happened is just simply that these nerves that are wired into my brain stem have been allowed to tone in a different way, right? And so I have relaxed just that, just that little bit of support right under those ridges has allowed my nervous system to actually feel supported and relaxed. So this is one of the magical things about yoga to me is that really subtle things can make a huge difference. Give yourself whatever you think is going to be helpful. Maybe an eye pillow is helpful because it puts that little bit of weight and encourages the eye to drop back into the back. Again, we might have noticed earlier that the eyes are really connected to this area of the body. Understandably so, <laughs> because of our biology. And then feel yourself gently give in to the earth. Just let the earth hold you. And so you're letting this soft, tender heart be held in the nest of your upper back. And you're letting your soft, vulnerable belly be held on the beautiful arch of your lower spine. And you're letting 
these tender, very sensitive areas in the very lowest part of the abdomen be held in the beautiful bowl of the pelvis. We have all these structures designed for support. Allow yourself to be supported. Don't move yet. <laughs> but take a moment and just see, like, is there a little smile on your face? <laughs> and if there's not, just let a really gentle smile kind of creep over your uh, facial features. Don't force it. Just see if you can allow the kind of sense of a smile to kind of come from deep within your heart and land on your face. <laughs> uh, hmm. <laughs> mm. and then take a breath so deep you can feel it all the way to your toes let it go with an audible sigh <sighs> and then give your fingers and toes a little wiggle Spread them out and squeeze them in and spread them out oh, and squeeze them in, the toes and fingers that is. And then move your wrist and ankles again. Oh, that feels good. Sometimes I do just like kind of little flamenco shaky things with the wrist and sometimes circles. And then give your body a stretch down the banana sides. So like a little over to the right and a little over to the left. Oh, and a big stretch. And then, oh, one more time, yogis. We're going to bring those knees in. <laughs> you can grab your ankles. You can grab your feet and the backs of the thighs, the knees, or not grab anything at all if you want to. But give yourself a little hug. Oh. And then if you like to rock yourself up, you can do that. I'm going to roll to my side. And I'm going to use one pillow for my head. Because oh. I like to take a moment just to sort of transition. before sitting up. Oh. Oh. Thank you so much 
for joining me for candlelight vinyasa, kind of funky, flowy candlelight vinyasa. <laughs> Hopefully you're kind of uh, digging my groove here tonight. <laughs> Let's take a big breath together, big inhale, big sigh. <sighs> Namaste, yogis. <laughs> 